Hello, my name is Helena Madden and I'm one of the ruminant veterinary managers working with MSD Animal Health. In today's veterinary technical talk, I'm going to bring you information on cryptosporidiosis in neonatal calves and I'm also going to give you some more information about Bovillus cryptium. This is the first of its kind, a vaccine designed to protect young calves against cryptosporidiosis. Cryptosporidiosis is one of the most common causes of neonatal calf diarrhea. Neonatal calf diarrhea is consistently the number one cause of death in calves less than a month of age. Neonatal calf diarrhea has many adverse effects on the health and the welfare of the affected calves, but it also adds significantly to workload on farm, as farmers try to manage affected calves, but also stem the spread of the disease. When we look at diagnostic samples from calf scar cases, cryptosporidiosis is consistently one of the main causes identified. Combined with rotavirus, it accounts for over half of all cases of calf scar in Ireland. And in fact, in the most recent surveillance report, there was an increase in cryptosporidiosis identified to 25% of samples. Mixed infections, particularly of rotavirus and cryptosporidiosis, are common and usually result in more severe disease. Worldwide, cryptosporidiosis is one of the most common, if not the most common cause of calf scar outbreaks. In Northern Ireland, crypto was the most commonly identified agent in calf scar samples in the most recent surveillance report. Cryptosporidium is a notoriously difficult pathogen to manage and is extremely efficient at causing disease in young calves. Cryptosporidium is a single-celled protozoal agent and the species of crypto that causes disease in cattle is Cryptosporidium parvum. The infectious stage of crypto is the oocyst and this contributes significantly to the difficulties of managing the parasite. The oocyst is extremely resistant, with many standard methods of disinfection being ineffective against it. It is also extremely infectious, with as few as 17 oocysts having been shown to be capable of inducing infection in a calf. To put this into context, a calf infected with crypto for six days can shed 3 by 10 to the 10 oocysts. This combined with the ability of them to survive in the environment makes it easy to see how calves can become infected and how it is so difficult to manage the disease. The ability of crypto to cause disease is further compounded by the complicated life cycle of the parasite. Many features of the life cycle contribute significantly to the ability of the parasite to cause disease. And as we will see later, understanding of this life cycle has also been critical in the development of Bovillus cryptium. Upon existation from the oocyst, the infective sporozoites invade the intestinal cells. These then form a unique location within the intestinal cell in an intracellular extracytoplasmic parasitophilus vacuole. The parasite then goes through stages of sexual and asexual reproduction, ultimately resulting in the production of the infective oocyst. Thin and thick wall oocysts are produced. The thick walled oocysts are excreted in the feces of the infected animal and are immediately infectious to other animals. The thin walled oocysts exist within the intestinal tract, starting off an auto infection cycle further perpetuating the disease within the infected animal and also increasing the number of oocysts that are shed. This invasion of the intestinal cells results in damage to the intestinal cells and villus atrophy, resulting in a malabsorptive and osmotic diarrhea and the resulting clinical signs of calf scour. Shedding of oocysts can start four to 12 days post-infection and last for one to two weeks. Because of all of this, Cryptosporidiosis is transmitted fecal orally. Therefore, the risk of exposure to calves is very high and the disease can be present in calf pens, on feeding equipment, and can also be spread by people moving throughout the farm. Cryptosporidium parvum is also a zoonotic agent and can account for a significant number of outbreaks in people. Young children and people who are immunocompromised are particularly susceptible to disease. It is therefore no wonder that a vaccine to protect against this difficult disease has been long awaited. Bovillus cryptium is designed to protect young calves against cryptosporidiosis. 
The vaccine is indicated for active immunization of pregnant cows and heifers to raise antibodies in their colostrum against GP40 of Cryptosporidium parvum and intended for passive immunization of calves to significantly reduce clinical signs, i.e. diarrhea, caused by Cryptosporidium parvum. The GP40 antigen contained in Bovalis cryptium is key to the efficacy of the vaccine. GP40 is a glycoprotein on the surface of the parasite associated with the attachment of the parasite to intestinal cells. The significance of the antibodies against the GP40 antigen of Cryptosporidium parvum has been well established. The GP40 antigen in Bovalis cryptium induces antibodies that neutralize the C. parvum infection in vitro and are reactive with at least four different stages of the life cycle. Sporozoites, trophozoites, merozoites and merons. Studies to demonstrate the efficacy of Bovalis cryptium showed significantly lower diarrhea and disease scores in the test group of calves versus the control group. So how do we use Bovalis cryptium? With Bovalis cryptium, we vaccinate the cow in the 12 to three week window prior to calving. For the first year, two shots are required with a four to five week interval between the injections and the second vaccine being no later than three weeks pre-calving. After this, the annual booster can be administered as a single shot in the 12 to three week window prior to calving. Bovillus cryptium can be administered at the same time as Bovillus rotavec corona in different injection sites. Because we vaccinate the cow or the heifer pre-calving, protection relies on adequate, good colostrum management post-calving. The calf should be fed colostrum and transition milk for the first five days of life. This is to ensure that the antibodies are transferred to the calf to protect the calf in the first few weeks of life when they are most vulnerable to disease. For more information about cryptosporidiosis and bovillus cryptium, contact your vet or visit bovillus.ie.